Hello. Welcome. Hello, I'm Harley. I'm Josh. And we are the, the Harley, Harley and, and Josh, Josh show. show. We're going to be talking about music stuff. We've got some music from Hot Tramp, East Ham Pirates, Impilo. We've also got news regarding Moby releasing an album via the Calm app. We've got right, some, right, interesting. Left. We've got so, <laughs> sideways. At the end of the road, um, turn right. Um, oh, please record your own one. Oh yeah, you can great. do that. Ways you can do that. Mm. Should we do it? Should we do a Harley and Josh show one? <laughs> Let us know if you want to hear a Harley and Josh show sat nav. <laughs> a banjo, the sound of the banjo. <laughs> Go back where you came from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going home then. Um, right. So we've also got some news about Article 13 again. We're keeping you updated on that. And um, we're also going to be talking about vinyl sales and how well they're doing at the moment. Oh, we're good. also, if we get to fit it in, we're going to be talking about, because we did <laughs> fit it in last week, uh, we're going to talk about location and music. But yeah. before all that, the important thing, Harley... <laughs> What'd you do? Please. Oh, well, well, well ah, that's noises. You had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, I had a really cool weekend. Um, it was, it was very musical. I had three days worth of music, but only one of them I was playing. Um, Sweet. Which was a, an eventful night, it turned out to be. Mm. Well, I, technically you played on Sunday as well. Oh, yeah, I did. One track. Yeah. It was nice. And I played too many strings. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, too, too many. Too, too many. Too, too. Went from a four string to a six string. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was playing with Lady J and the Troublemakers, along with fellow oddball troublemaker um, nice. on Friday with Mr. Dan Dolman. Very nice. As we, we spoke about it last week, it was really good fun. Um, we had, oh, did we have a rehearsal? Yeah, we did have a rehearsal Tuesday night. Wow, bonus. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, and it was quite interesting. Dan's very, very switched on with these kind of things, and he's like... The rehearsal wasn't for him to learn the songs. It was really, it was for mostly for him to acclimatise to the signals that he would get right. from Justine uh, and reading her body language to know when she's about to stop and... Turn left. Yeah. Uh, this is a very sat navigational based <laughs> so, episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was the thing. Now, it's worth actually mentioning before, I'm going to talk about this because I've spoken about it before, before I had my gig... All the way over in Chelmsford. Right. I had to go all the way over to Norwich. Right. To have some goo put in my ears. As as you were talking about last week. Yes, yes, yes. So what was the scheme called again? It, um, Gooey scheme. It's called Hiv. Google. I think uh, uh, we, did tro- we did post it on the Harley and Josh show page. So check it out. Yes, you did. I think that it's called Here for Musicians. Ah, H-E-A-R. H-E-A-R, exactly. H-E-A-R. Um. And let's find the link because... Yeah, because that's oh, really useful. Cause he, so um, David Langdon was asking about this. What's up, dude? Yeah. Um, What's up, dude? Um, we, because it's, it's great for protecting your ears when you are performing live. It's all about uh, ear protection rather than actual uh, in-ear monitors, right? Is that right? Yeah. The, the ear plugs. Yeah, so um, just, yeah. Um, monitors. They can sort out doing in-ear monitors, but the, the scheme is purely to help people... Musicians not go deaf. That's always good. Um, so yeah, if you go to here for musicians, h e a r. dot org. dot uk. Um, now they, you have a consultation with a hearing specialist person. A consultation. Yes, uh, they they look at your ears inside and out. Mm. Um, they do a little hearing test. Cool. Uh, to check sort of what your hearing levels are like. Um, How'd you do? So with like a, you put headphones on, you have a little button, mm. and you go. But how did you do? I did good. Yeah? I did good. Um, I was protecting. well within. Yeah, I, I'm quite good at protecting. Mm. Um, I they had a uh, there's a level of error of which is kind of minimal, and I was well within that. There was a slight dip. I think they said at about 4k, which is normal for musicians because right. those are the sort of frequencies that can be the loudest and more harsh when you're on stage okay. next to cymbals. What and would stuff. you say usually sits in a 4k range? What kind of instrument or? Um, You've got a lot of things going on there, actually. Yeah. You've got the the. Uh, Is that around our mid range? Or yeah, so that's yeah. that's the uh, where you get a lot of the vocal noise, a yeah. lot of the the um, aggression in the vocals. Okay. Like that, ah, 
right yeah no, <laughs> so I mean... the upper the upper end of that is, is is the 4k like they say symbols stuff like that um and it's on the around sort of where the distortion you get from a guitar is around the 5k mm. sort of range so it's not a million miles off of that so yeah. there's a lot for a rock band in that one place yeah exactly um, right when you're mixing that's the bit you've Saxophone got really be careful and horn sections they'd all be probably there, yes they? Yeah. yes definitely mm. um so it's that's a very easy <laughs> scooped yeah, scoop, scoop he, did, he did he did an, an action of a scoop there yeah yeah mm. like an ice cream half scoop. pipe Yes. You get a half pipe uh, So, uh, yeah, I have a mild half pipe in my 4K range, which, but still at an okay level. Right. Uh, it's still not to a point where it's, uh, you have hearing loss. It's, okay. So, which is good. So, I felt good. So, this was subsidized, right? By the yes. Musicians' Union? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, not by the Musicians' Union. Uh, right. Just by the, if you can prove that you're working in the uh, music industry. Right. Um, I did. I. How did you prove it? So, they asked for links for you. Uh, of websites, right. uh, Facebook pages, any p- videos of you performing, right? Okay. Um, and uh, any sort of like, so I put loads of links. I put the, f- the chart attack, hopefuls. I also put the Harley and Josh show mm. page on there, and they asked for a reference of somebody else who works in the same industry as me who could vouch for me. I actually put you. Um, <laughs> nobody called me. <laughs> nobody. Yeah, that, they came back to me so quick because they went, yeah. "Oh yeah, yeah, I can we, see you in that video." Yeah, he's famous, mate. Yeah, of course. So they know. Um, and it was great. I went and had my, my ears moulded. There were a few different types of plugs you could put in. Right. Um, or different filters. So I went for the 17K decibel reduction, which is completely, right. well, I say completely flat, mostly flat. Okay. Um, it's their flattest range uh, hearing uh, attenuators, which is great. Um, and you get your own choice of colours. Oh, would you go for? Purple. I actually thought that in my head that it was going to be purple. I, it, I was torn between pink or purple. Nice. Because my thought was, the brighter the colour, the harder they are to lose. True. That is exactly, yeah, yeah. purely my... That's my, a good thought process. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was great. Um, Andy Hopgood, she also got some made on the same day as well. Nice. Um, she uh, went for black ones. All oh, right. To suit, she's a, a very uh, dark dressed lady yeah, and uh, so it, it it suits her down to the ground mm-hmm. so it's great um so yeah uh they should be here in the next three weeks I'll, awesome. uh, when they turn up i'll give you guys a, a big old review and we'll, yeah, we'll try yeah. them in the show and let's... see if i can do a whole of show without listening to you yeah, then. you wish yeah that's the um, plan it's the so plan. you had a gig after that in chelmsford though. so yeah so drove all the way from norwich to chelmsford cool. via mr dan dolman's house mm. um it was a really cool fun gig we set up um uh, and just had a great time. We played there previously. It was at the United Brethren. Um, yeah, you said about this. Yeah. And we had played there before, and it was a bit quiet. Yet yeah, this time around was a lot more, lot busier. Mm-hmm. People were up dancing. It was really good fun. Mm. A nice chilled laugh. Like they, they were. We were saying, talking to the crowd, and they were talking back at us. That's helpful. And it was nice and uh, banterish. Mm. Dare I say? It was great. It was really good Band-ter. fun. Um, and then because Dan is is from Chelmsford. So oh. he had some mates turn up. You went off on a bender. Yeah. Uh, I had some mates turn up as well. So we went out afterwards. We went clubbing in Chelmsford, mate. Oh um, it was it was good fun, actually. Right. Bear in mind, I was the sober one of the sort. I think I was the only sober one. I've heard about your dancing tactics. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, so no. I was uh, driving and it got to the end of the night. And Was there a pole involved? I'm pretty there, sure there was, there was a no pole, pole There was no pole dancing. No, no, that was sure, last weekend. Sure. That actually was true. Anyway, so um, I'll tell you about that later. Good. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, after the clubs and that, we decided to uh, walk, well, drive home me and dan it was about three o'clock in the morning when we left chelmsford and we just got past braintree and i heard a horrible noise of the car going oh flat tire oh i thought it was a sigh like uh, oh, fed up with this yeah dan was just like anymore. oh don't want to do it anymore no <laughs> um yeah flat <laughs> tire half oh. in the morning not the best of times nope uh we jumped to it me and it's dan hour, we're it? like absolutely on it like mm. We changed that wheel in no time. Nice. It was great. F1. I mean, yeah, I was absolutely exhausted. I got home at five o'clock in the end. Yum. In the morning, which no wasn't great. I had a lesson in the morning. Uh, I ended up having to cancel that just because I woke up and like, I need to sort my van out and I still uh, need to, you know, get more than four hours sleep. No thanks. Yeah. So that was uh, that was exa- uh, exhausting and mm. stuff. And so I had a bit of a rest mm. um, ready for my Saturday night. Semi-brief or a minimum? 
A semi brief. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's, 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 cool. that's a whole bar. Yeah, exactly. So I, um, yeah, and then I rested for, for my evening antics, but uh, I don't want to talk about my evening on Saturday night. I want to talk about <laughs> your evening on Saturday night. Should we do music and then we'll talk about my evening on Saturday oh, night? Oh, you which sure, was actually mate? your evening on Saturday night. Oh, well, I, you know, Harley, I, you, did a, you did a good you did a good job, mate. Harley did stuff well done, buddy. <laughs> I love you too. Uh, so, yeah, uh, let's play some music from Hot Tramp. They're playing locally very soon with Ghosts of Men. So, check this out. This is Demon and Me by Hot Tramp. Mmm. That was Demon and Me by Hot Tramp. That's available on their SoundCloud. Uh, that's uh, uh, Josh Carr told me that he wrote that about how much he changes from his offstage persona into his onstage persona. So he goes from you know a very normal ish guy ish, <laughs> off stage. You know, we wouldn't be friends if he was normal. Um, uh, to this sort of dynamo demon on stage, uh, yeah. where he's very confrontational. He can be you know really getting people's faces, stealing um, boats, stealing boats. Yeah, exactly. Dressed as Bowie, <laughs> Bowie, <laughs> David Bowie. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's demon and me. Check that out. So Harley, oh, I'm going to talk about what I did. <laughs> Ooh, here we go. Oh, mm. so, what did yeah, you did? Friday, I did a ding. Yeah. Um, well, Friday, we had uh, a Beertopia where we played at Kesgrave and uh, Milsom's Hall. Uh, no, Milsom's Kesgrave Hall, uh, courtesy of Pink Shed. Uh, so shout out to Tom and Polly uh, from Pink Shed. Thanks for having yeah. us on for both days for that. Um, and uh, and shout out to Chris, the sound guy. He did a great job uh, mm-hmm. with sorting us out. Uh, nice little system up there. Um, Lovely system. Yeah, it was great, wasn't it? Very sort of, um, it was slightly more directional than the last one. They, they, sort of, they were trying yeah. to cover mostly the dance floor so that people out in the, you know, when they were actually sampling the beers could, you know, talk to each other it was uh, yeah helps um but yeah so the friday we sort of showed up so um the way it worked was four o'clock that frisco monk who were headlining who are wonderful mm-hmm. um they turned up at four for their sound check and then we had from five onwards until about six six thirty to do our sound check um and uh yeah everything went really 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 smoothly um Frisco Monk have got a nice, uh, compact setup uh, where some of it is done in amp sims, so amp sim- uh, yeah. amplifier simulators, and um, and they hear it from their foldback, so they'd be hearing it through their monitors instead of having you know an amp on stage and a monitor. Sometimes it just takes too much space yeah. when you're trying to be economical with it. Um, so. Yeah, so they were great. They were nine piece band, three you know, three horns, bass, singer, guitarist, and drummer. Um, uh, the drummer teaches uh, one of the students from Rock Project, so he and Rainer were oh, sort yeah. of talking about that because Rainer was drumming. Anyway, so um, the singer I was really impressed with. I can't remember her name, but she wasn't a member of the band. She was a depth singer. Oh wow! And uh, but. She she was auditioning to join the band, so that was her audition was the show. That's not a bad audition, right? It's pretty crazy. So hopefully she got paid for it, isn't it? Yeah. which is a great thing. So paid audition, mental. Um, they mental. Uh, but they also were doing that the next night with a different show they had with a different singer, and oh, they were doing okay. that the weekend after with a different show with a different singer to wow. see how it went. So I'm going to be interested to see who they choose. Hopefully the one from Friday because she was great. Um, <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, so she was, yeah, that was really good. We had a nice little set. There was about 180 people there, I think, on the Friday night. And uh, yeah, really nice crowd. Um, you know, very res- responsive. So when I'm like, sing along, they would. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so ended up on a high. We were really, really nice. On the Saturday, we were doing the same thing. But during the day, Rich and I were booked for a duo gig. So I was playing double bass and he was playing guitar at Colchester Town Hall for the Secret Vintage Fair uh-huh. uh, put on by Janine Tompkins. Uh, we've played that uh, the last two years, I believe now. And uh, it was really, really nice. It was just like, it was smaller scale, but much more grand because it's in the middle of the, the yeah. town hall with these marble steps and all these figurines. And, Were you in the in the main hall? Yes. Were you on the stage? Yes. Or, yeah. yeah. It's, a nice, it's, nice. it's, it's weird because it's a wide stage, but it's quite shallow. Yeah. So you're probably fine for a Right general. in front of the organ as well. So yeah. that felt really cool. But um, I'd not played there before. Had you played there before? I've played there. Uh, there's a company that do a Christmas 
party oh, cool. there. Party. Um, it's like I think like some solicitors firm, oh, and we've, uh, with uh, yeah. the mementos we played at their Christmas party two years in a row. Oh, nice! Are you going to book for this year? I hope. I hope so. Yeah, I haven't I started. So. They usually book around. Oh, you're good, aren't you? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was really nice. So we, you know, wandering around there, just sort of. Uh, you know, getting some some vintage things, so spending the money that I'd uh, just earned. Um, but yeah, it was really nice. My mum turned up on the last song, so we had to play for a bit longer. Um, and uh, noticed that I got the the gnarliest blood blister yeah. that I've ever had. Because uh, you know, I love playing double bass, and I play it quite frequently. But when I don't have mm. a gig booked, then I'm not playing it so much. So my hardened middle finger on my right hand, you know, the, for, the hardened from blisters that, you know, get crazy and then heal up and, uh, you know, get ready with calluses for, for when I play it again, it just softens up between gigs. So this thing was just massive. You saw it on Saturday. It, well, yeah. <laughs> now, are you supposed to pop blood blisters? I don't know, but I have. <laughs> I just well, basically, I guess. it was just it looked like a, a mustache slash rainbow just yeah. on my middle finger. It looked like half a Cheerio. You know when you get the Cheerios that like <laughs> break like and they're only half. I think that's spot on, but black. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. black Cheerio, whole meal. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, a whole week. <laughs> so one. Oh, we're all wholesome today, aren't we? Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, but it was proper, you know, sticking out. So I had to do, you know, an hour and a half worth of bass playing. Well, it was only the last sort of forty-five minutes, which which I was like ouch um but so i lanced it put safety pin through the side of it squeezed it out sorry for anybody if i'm making you feel ill it's the noise it made and um just covered it in a plaster and it seems to be all right now it's probably gonna you know be a pain yeah but it'll be fine so when's your, when's your next double bass gig uh i don't know so actually. you're fine <laughs> yeah i yeah i don't know um yeah yeah exactly so i'm not exactly going to be using it anytime soon but the uh it's just, playing bass though yeah of is course. also hard because you know but you know, I'll just have to get through it. But then, so after that, we went down straight from there, down back to M- Milsom's to do Kesgrave Hall at Beertopia again. Our sound check was supposed to be at five. Uh, we got there at half four just to be nice and early, uh, stuffed our faces. And uh, yes, yeah, so it was Robbie Gladwell doing it that night. Um, and just, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit, <laughs> I'm a bit <laughs> miffed with that because, uh, you know, they're great players and stuff like this and they've done some great gigs and they've all, you know, sessioned with some great musicians but they were late and uh pushed back our sound check and they were on stage praying you know they were just sort of jamming basically mm. until about quarter past six right. so the doors were opening at half six and that ate into our sound check by about an hour um and then by the time we'd got on stage set everything up they would ju- we got to play through about 30 seconds of a song and they cut us off and they were just like um you know props to tom and chris for you know trying their best but yeah uh, you know and also they the band didn't take much gear off the stage so i was boxed in on all sides yeah so I couldn't it move was a on busy stage. stage it was a big old stage mm-hmm. to have only four of you on there but there wasn't a lot of room no not at all so i was not happy with that because uh you know common courtesy a little bit yeah. of common courtesy get there on time get your set sound check done quickly and let your other musicians do their job as well yeah I think totally. it's unfair to do that, um, but you know we didn't get spoken to by any of them, so which was. I I will point out though, it yeah. d- didn't affect the performance or the sound. You guys sounded amazing. Yeah. I, I love. I've always, I I mentioned on the night that it's a really nice sounding room because it's nice and dead. You've got that. Uh, Harley was there, by the way. Just oh, so yeah. you know, he, he, we're not telepathically up. linked. No, no, well, no, in that way. This anyway. is what I did Saturday night. Yeah, mm. so. Um, and it was, yeah, it was really good sound. Um, it was really cool to see you guys really getting into it. Um, mm. And I, I said, you know, it's one of your tight performances that I've seen you guys, Thanks, which, you I mean, probably more the fact that I haven't seen you play in a long, yeah, long time. So you've yeah. just got better and better. And, I, and it's just, I've just had a cross section of that. And yeah. it was just really cool. Oh, geez, Great. Man. You had people up and dancing. And I did have a few people say that, you know, it'd be good if you guys were to play you know, a little bit longer, <laughs> maybe even a head long. <laughs> I actually yeah, had a couple of people say that to me, actually. They were like, can can you, why weren't you headlining it? And I'm like, I'm not saying anything. They were like, yeah, I'd prefer it if you guys were playing right now. Like, uh, anyway, personal preference, personal preference. But yeah, so shout out to CDC Productions, uh, Chris and the guys. For well, they're the sound company. Yeah, they, they did a they good job. They lovely stuff, yeah. Yeah, they're based in Colchester. So if you're looking for an event, yeah, for, for sound for your event, then check them out. Um, so that was really fun. Um, uh, yeah, it was nice to have Harley along. We were all sort of just actually just chilling out and having a bit of a good fun after that, yeah. 
Um, uh, after that, on the Sunday, we had the Rock Project Encore show. We did indeed, yeah. It was wonderful, wasn't that it? It was great. Really good. It was... Um, the set up went really well. You really did. simply. We kept it nice and simple on that, didn't we? Yeah. Um, well, you used your... Ex- uh, yes, it's yes, 18. Um, so, um, and and I was only running like seven channels. That's great. Um, and it was just, it was great fun. Tell the people what you did to Rob. I may have. Okay, there's a special, there's a fault in the desk. Sure. That occasionally, mm-hmm. at specific moments, your specific moments, pitch shifts the vocal. <laughs> So I think it was, it was like I was like, "Hello, everybody! Thanks for coming to the Rock Project." It was like, "What? What's the? What's going on?" <laughs> it was exactly that. It was amazing. I was so proud of oh, myself. I was very proud of you too. Um, but yeah, no. Shout out to all the musicians that played. Uh, I'm gonna miss people out. Anne, Cat, Greg, Graham, Mark, Nigel, Steve, Nigel, Jeff, Rich, Chris, uh, Ivan. Hi. Mm, he did a great job. Did you say Mark? Yes. Mid Steve. I think we got most people Rich. there, but I'm gonna say if I did miss you, you did a great job anyway. Chris. Yeah. Did you say Chris. Did I... Yeah. Yes. Okay. I thought we think we done a Really nice turnout in the audience as well. Really nice. Supportive. Yeah. Supportive. Supportive from local musicians as well. Uh, yeah. We had not just friends and family of the bands, but. People who support the Royal Project, which is great. Exactly, but also people that are gigging musicians, like yeah. Ali Hewitt. Yeah, great to see Ali, again, Ali. Yeah. Thanks for coming, mate. And uh, and Roma. Yes. From yes. Roma's World. And brought, um, brought her world with her. Yes, exactly. Brought the gang. Um, yeah, come and down Chris Sylvester as well. You. Yes, indeed. Yeah, take some lovely some pictures, pictures of us as well. So. Thank you. Um, I got up and I got to jam with the band because yeah. some people were a bit... And uncomfortable with doing solos whereas I'm very comfortable because <laughs> I just want to be in people's I just want to be in the way that's we what were, I do we were joking on your the first time you did a solo that you were struggling to stand still you're like no nope, just just stay in the background because it's not my thing <laughs> yeah. and then as the night gone on it got a little bit more the, the guitar got a bit more vertical <laughs> and they were like nah let's have him, let you have your moment <laughs> however it was really cool on the last song when you were doing a solo with one hand doing a solo with the other one pointing to the rest of the band for applause to get from, from the other people <laughs> you know introducing the band even when you don't have a microphone which is great because you that's something you always do is you introduce the band and stuff yeah, but the fact that you him. didn't have a microphone to do that or another hand really well done yeah oh cheers well yeah because I was realising that I was doing Super Home Alabama and the solo is quite long for that and I'm just like no because loads of people are going to be looking at me right now (laughs) during the solo where it's about the people that have been you know practising their bottoms off uh, for months to try and get that, that, that that show done so yeah well done guys uh, so I yeah we finished off that packed down yeah uh, gave everybody a good pat on the back went home and I watched Bohemian Rhapsody oh yeah I hadn't actually seen it before I still haven't seen it I'd been putting it off yeah it's wonderful is it good it's just wonderful I mean like the casting is amazing so like Brian May's character just looked so much like him and yeah. uh, and obviously Rami Malek as as Freddie Mercury uh, the, the soundtrack was wonderful uh, very uplifting story and you know just it's dealing with uh, the difficulty of coming out in the public eye uh, uh, very very you know that was very poignant and also um, his AIDS diagnosis diagnosis which was you know, quite emotional. Even mm-hmm. though it did, it did bring that forward. He was supposed to be uh, diagnosed in, I think, eighty-seven or something like this, and uh, yeah, and that, it, you know, it, it put it down to eighty-five. But anyway, yeah. Uh, but my, it's kind of depressed me a bit. Yeah. All right. Because that's but music biopics do that to me a bit. Mm-hmm. Because as a musician, uh, if you have any sense of ego about you, you're kind of like, I'm going to shoot for the stars. I want to, I want to play big shows. And I want to make the best music I possibly can yeah. and just entertain, right? But then you watch a film like that and you sit there and think, give up. Sometimes <laughs> you're like, no way can you be Freddie Mercury or, you know, match I, him. I mean, I've tried many times. I just, <laughs> I just can't, quite, can't quite nail it. But, I mean, do you know what I mean, though? You sort of like, when yeah. you see somebody else that is just amazing at what they do and has just killed it from day one yeah like made some wonderful music uh, and entertained people and just become such a part of people's you know queen is just synonymous with rock and roll um yeah. and you know you think of the best front man in the world you'll think freddie mercury a lot of people would anyway i i've i'm not the, i've always been quite optimistic in that front 
Uh-huh. I can't remember what it, 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 you know, was it shoot for the stars, you might reach the moon. Yeah, that's good. You know, you might not make it as, as far as Freddie Mercury. You, mm. you know, you might not be able might to hit notes as, as far as high, Mercury. <laughs> but you might as <laughs> Well, actually, no, to think about it, because, I mean, if he's shooting for a star, he almost got to the star, which would be Sun, because the uh, Mercury's the first planet. So oh, yeah. he shot for the stars. He, he was almost pretty... got the... Well, he went past the moon, went, got to Mercury. Well, there we go. Inhospitable planet, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, that's <laughs> that's science. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I, uh, I I was actually sort of like walking around this morning, just like oh, like a mopey zoo lion. Yeah, mopey zoo lion. Just <laughs> that old phrase. Just like oh man, I don't know uh, why. Oh, I can't I can't do anything that good. But then, like you say, if you just try and you just think. I've tried, done the best that I can yeah. and done, you know, the, the best creative decisions that I can make and entertained some people and uplifted them a bit. Yeah. Then I've sort of, then you feel like you ca- you're carrying on the legacy of these kind of kinds of people. Yeah. It's, it's great to be able to be in this world, in this industry that your job is to make people happy essentially exactly. yeah you're or at right. least to make people feel even the songs the sad songs that can Oof. can really tug at the heartstrings you're making people feel uh something that it's it's it is a drug in the way that you're mm. you're causing these emotions that wouldn't have otherwise been exactly Im- it existed no we are the dealers we give you everything you need sorry i'm challenging my ryan johnson no, um good man. Good man. right yeah i'm gonna shut up about it because oh i'm getting sad thinking about how Amazing Freddie Mercury was. That's right. I'll um, give you a hug. Anyway, I'll play the song. I'll give you a big old hug. This is a track by Impilo because we love them. They're playing locally at the Three Wise Monkeys thanks to 5011 again. Uh, so uh, this is due time. Check it out. Sweet. Let's spoon. Welcome to the Music News. The Copyright Directive, Article 13, continued to draw rebuke. Uh, We also have the story of Moby releases a new album exclusively on Calm App with potential audiences of 45 million people. But now we have vinyl raking in more revenue for the British music industry than YouTube. Crazy, right? That's mad. Right, the story is uh, revenue from video streams, uh, YouTube, Facebook, etc., etc., rose about nine point nine percent last year to twenty nine point seven million. Right, that's forty million dollars. The BPI noted that YouTube delivered more than thirty billion streams in twenty eighteen. Uh, this would have been greater still had video streaming platforms predominantly YouTube generated a great deal more than £29.7 million in return for an estimated £30 billion plus annual plays of music videos in the UK. Which, uh, amazingly, vinyl sales saw a slight 3.7 increase, 3.7% increase to 57 point one million so wow it's, you know 29.7 million on youtube to uh, you know compared to 57.1 million pounds uh it's nearly double that of the video streams it's, it's crazy that's mad um so with vinyl comprising a 6.6 sli- percent slice it's admittedly not that big a proportion the uk music industry may have grown its net worth 20 percent in the last three years but it's slowing down after streaming's rapid glow- growth so yeah. it, it, it's crazy because i mean the amount 30 billion streams think about how you know those you know uh, 50 million 57 million uh, sales of, of of vinyl records how many times those tracks are played i doubt it will be 30 billion Times. No, no. Um, I mean, I'm because I mean, vinyl has a shelf life anyway, doesn't yeah, it? True. You know, you've only get so many plays before you start. Yeah, I don't think you get thirty billion out of one vinyl. I mean, crazy. If you did, then wow, <laughs> that's a super material right there. Yeah, right. Don't chuck that in the it, sea. Yeah, right. Carbon fiber vinyl. Um, Carbon. So you have got. So Jeff Taylor, BPI's chief executive, wrote, long-term growth depends on robust government action to tackle the value gap. So there is a value gap between, yeah. uh, you know, YouTube streams are very valuable, yeah. uh, but they're just not matching up to, you know, their sort of um, streaming value rather than their monetary value. Mm-hmm. Um, so pro- they need to promote investment, ensure online platforms take responsible action to reduce infringement and secure the future talent pipeline by giving state school pupils the opportunity to discover and develop their talent. Amen. 
Yeah. More funding for schools to teach music. Please, loud. I'll sign that. Yes. Yeah. Right? That's it's obvious but mm. yeah so yeah we need some more money from from youtube streams all i'm saying oh yeah. go on harley what's your good news story because i've got another sort of so one coming up i think this is really interesting okay mm-hmm. so uh, moby has entered into an exclusive partnership with the world's leading sleep and meditation app i could do with that mm. calm uh, to release his album long ambience 2 today which is friday that was 15th of march i think it was, yeah. it was about two weeks ago yeah we, we, we're up to date with the times guys whatever mm. so uh meditation is at least a one billion dollar industry what's that in pounds like about 750 mil that's still good mm. um and uh in in the united states alone uh while the lucrative fitness sector has proved to be popular marketing, a mm. popular marketing platform for the music business. Definitely. No major artist until Moby has taped has tapped into the potential reach that is the mm. meditation sector. It's really interesting, isn't it? Because I mean, think about that. I mean, uh, we've got some sort of figures there. Um, forty-five million downloads on that app. Wow, that's he has a captive audience of forty-five million potential. Um, and so it, it's absolutely amazing. So so it's just launched about 18 months ago, and it's got 200 tracks, uh, having, a bit, having amassed about 150 million streams. That'd be a lot of library music. Yeah. But not an actual album. Like Rainer and I were talking about this earlier. Yeah. And we were saying about, you remember when I, when the Apple update happened, you got a U2 album for uh, free, and you're like, yeah. nobody wanted it, <laughs> apart from but, maybe YouTube, U2 fans. But it's that thing of like, you couldn't delete it off, and yeah. you know, it's music you didn't want. However, Moby is just kind of synonymous with chill. The thing is, uh, I mean, Moby is an artist. Bono isn't in Moby. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know what the relationship is, but uh, sure. I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but that, that's an interesting thing, though. It's also hopefully changes the way we think about music um, in terms of we think about music as something released by an artist, but you mm-hmm. don't think about the artist who wrote the library music to a meditation app or any, or, you know, or puts the background music or the theme tune for something. It doesn't have so much of a brand to it. No. When it's something like Moby. Um, Yeah. So I I think that's just a a great lesson to be learned from that is just to think about what kind of brand partnerships your music would work with. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of the time, you know, the kind of brand partnerships we do as sort of local gigging musicians is like, okay, would this go well, go down well with this particular venue? Would it work if I was supporting this particular band? Uh, and, you know, would I work with the catalog of this particular record label? Yeah. That's mostly the, the kind of the brand partnerships we're used to. But now with this growing digital base, we need to start thinking about, okay, so what kind of apps would our music work on you know what kind yeah. of games would our music kind of work work with so yeah it'll be an interesting thing to uh, uh, to sort of delve into um it you know i had to do a marketing plan um for when i was starting up the business and i had to think about that and, and, and think about you know where where i want to place my music um and now that we've got such you know, technology at our fingertips, quite literally. Um, I think, you know, a lot of local bands need to start thinking about in your marketing plan or business plan, think about what other businesses locally or internationally, um, Mm. even that you could work with and could benefit from. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, get a bit of Moby in you. So uh, the copyright directive and its two controversial measures, Article 11, the link tax, and Ooh. Article 13, copyright filters, continue to draw rebuke. So several weeks ago, the copyright directive and the controversial Article 13 measure cleared a major hurdle in the European Union. Oh, I won't even start talking about that. Um, but anyway, the latest version includes statutes the music industry has long pushed for, including safe harbour reforms and new rights for European songwriters and artists. Over a week ago, in an unprecedented show of support, over 200 copyright groups banded together. Uh, Organisations representing representing from across the cultural and creative sectors united under one single hashtag. It was called hashtag yes to copyright. So that seemed to trend quite a lot. Now critics have banded together, critics have banded together to derail the copyright directive. It's two controversial measures, Article 11 and Article 13, uh, are being lauded as a bad thing under hashtag, hashtag save the internet. 
So it's battle of the hashtags for this one. <laughs> right. Great. Um, that does a lot. Anyway, according to the bill's opponents, the copyright law reform would silence critics and limit self-expression on the internet. So we have tried to cover this, uh, give this kind of equal time uh, when we've reported it on the show, um, because as a as a copyright owner, um, you get this kind of uh, this feel of uh, you want your music to be paid for if yeah. it's used however if you are a content provider on a youtube channel or on a facebook thing yeah. or, or you know have you got a twitter profile as well if you are tweeting out something like we would do when we are promoting people's uh, mm. you know people's music um the link tax could be a bad thing and uh, and the this the, the platforms themselves like facebook and youtube not having that music there might be a problem um for if you want to do a review or just have it as background music or you know play it on a show like ours yeah but you know that shouldn't be a thing if we've if we've paid for the rights which we do as part of the you know the radio uh, um, we you know, don't have to worry about it too much but it's no. just people that don't pay for it have got to worry about it but anyway a, a, a petition aptly dubbed Stop the Censorship Machinery, Save the Internet. Oh, crikey, it's going deep, isn't it? It's reached nearly 5.1 million signatures. And this remains just shy of the goal of 6 million. That seems a bit... Like, it's quite yeah. big, right? That's quite a lot, but it's, the, the petition's been going for about nine months. That's... I mean, there's a couple of things to be pointed out. I mean, we've had... There's stuff in the news, which I won't go into, about petitions being uh, hacked and... Um, mm -hmm. uh, Petitions being signed by bots right. has become a bit of a has been has been leaked uh, this week. Um, and if it's the sort of thing that internet giants can uh, easily manipulate, yeah, that that sounds like the sort of thing they might YouTube have invested interest. Probably do something like that, right? Google. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid so. Mm -hmm. And it also does bring back to the conversation we had before Christmas with Andy Hopgood about when was that Article 15, yes, uh, Article 13, 13 yeah, that yeah, we were right. talking about then um, about how it's it's very easy to be able to sort of sort this out. It's not hard to write a program that that distributes the the funds in the right way, mm -hmm. but they don't want to do it because then it Lobbyists. cuts into their mm -hmm. it cuts into their um into their profits. I guess. Yeah, it's just too much big money in it, isn't it? Yeah. That, that, that's the problem. It's just you know tech firms have gone a bit unchecked, and, yeah. and you know people like that can can start infringing on rights like that. Um, so. Uh, supporting staunch critic Julia Reed, MEP of the Pirate Party, Arr. a well-known pro-piracy group. Copyright directive opponents have strict demands for the EU. According to the website, the copyright directive, a form of censorship, quote marks there, will destroy the cultural norms of the internet. All right, chill out. Um, <laughs> uh, so this is a quote here from from uh, Julia Reed: The blocking of uploads in combination with faulty algorithms will result in so-called overblocking led by the platforms so that they can avoid legal violations uh, even the sharing of links can become a massive problem on platforms like twitter facebook and others so you know as mm. sort of critics uh, may find it difficult to review stuff um but the artists themselves will be getting the money that of course they're hoping yeah. for. but if this doesn't get you know just completely sandbagged who knows? It might. Well, it, it did before. Yeah, exactly. So, it's been it's been kind of you know, halted and stalled too many times now. It's kind of you know, but we'll still report on it. Anyway, Harley, let's spend some time talking about what we were supposed to talk about last week, eh? Jingle. Jingle. Harley, what's your thing? My thing that I thought about last morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Um, is location a barrier in music anymore? Um, How do you mean? I mean in many ways. So th it used to be a case of you had to do a lot of traveling uh, to get your band heard and get your band seen. Um, and if you were into a type of music that wasn't a part of the, your local co culture and you wanted to go see a band that was doing the sort of thing that you were into, you'd mm -hmm. then have to travel to go see it. Right, yeah. Especially people outside of London where there's not, a big melting pot of musicians. Mm. Um, so is that still a thing? Has the internet kind of quashed that? Mm. Or is, are there still boundaries that we have to, or hurdles we have to leap over to be able to do, create and absorb the music that we're into? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's just the internet that's changed that? I think in recent years, yes. Yeah. I think the fact that 
you can travel long distances uh, easier now than mm -hmm. ever. Uh, that was a thing that became, I think, potentially made music in the 70s kind of rock it in the way that it did, or in the 60s and 70s, should I say, mm -hmm. um, more so than it had done before uh, when travel was slightly more of a... Expensive. Yeah, mm -hmm. an upper upper class thing. Yeah. Whereas now, then, sort of back then, that barrier got broken down, so you could you had your working men being able to sort of go see the bands they like, mm -hmm. go... Uh, interact in the in the social circles that they wanted to, yeah, and were exposed to the music that that became their favorite music. Right. Whereas now, there's less of that. I think we're so used to like to. being able to sit up in bed and just watch a video of yeah. any of your favorite bands, and um, you know maybe too many people are equating that to the same as watching live music. Yeah, that's the that's the thing. I think the fact that we don't have to travel is that a detriment for right. music if you don't have to work so hard to get the music that you love to see the bands you want to see hmm. uh, and to feel that that sense of community definitely then that sense of community is is somewhat lost but the in the, talking about the community side of it the creative side of it yes. also uh, i found uh, the internet has taken the location thing out of it in a good way in this way i wrote an album uh, in about 2014 i think it would have been uh, maybe 2013 2014 uh, it's called lazy eye satellite it's on bandcamp and we wrote it uh, it was murray i was living in london murray was living uh, uh, he was sort of going back and forth from berry yeah uh, Ashley was in Ipswich, and there was another guy who was in it called Noah who lived in Amsterdam. Oh, wow. And so I wrote chords and lyrics, sent it to them individually, and this was actually a project from our mate Lee Hayden. Mm. Uh, it was his idea, like, can you actually have a band that doesn't exist in the same location? And yeah. thanks to the joys of Dropbox and Facebook messengers and, uh, and, and all that sort of stuff, we we just sort of cobbled this thing together. They yeah. recorded the drums actually at um, Omni Slash or, or Sleeper Cells studio that oh, okay, had in the back yeah. garden. Uh, we recorded um, at the Wayne Frame, Murray's mate from university, um, in Berry. He recorded bass there and some vocals because I popped down after yeah. we'd written everything. And I recorded Noah's parts in Amsterdam. I went over there and, and I was sort of, when I was doing the ferry contracts, I was going course, yeah. back and forth from there. I bought little you know, sort of what they, what was it called? The, uh, the focus, right? Sapphire. Yeah. Two I two thing. And I've, I've still got that and recorded yeah. the whole thing using that. And so location, we weren't, uh, you know, based all in the same place. There wasn't like a, a lazy eye satellite HQ, No. but thanks to, you know, um, cloud storage and, 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 you know, instant messaging. Yeah. It, it made the creative process much easier when you are away from people. So, you know, that's right, a good thing. Yeah. But like you say, not having a specific scene for a specific city is yeah. quite difficult. I mean, you think about, you know, in the 70s, you think Birmingham is where you get heavy metal. Yeah. If you Or in like, you know, uh, late 90s, early 2000s, um, into the sort of 2010s, uh, you get sort of uh, Clapton, you, know, you get, you know, Clapton, we yeah. get, not Clacton, where am I trying to think of? Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, um, Croydon, there we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like the the base for like dubstep and grime. Right. Uh, okay. And a lot of East London, that's where you go to get that type of yeah. music. But now think about the melting pot that we've got in Ipswich. We've got a great hip hop scene. We've yeah. got a rising soul scene. And it makes it easier, I guess, to find those scenes as well. Yeah. But I think every town now has its own genre specific scene. Do you think there is, do you think there is still that? That yes. location-based genre. Yeah, town but it's just stamp. sort of divided up. So they'll, you know, each town will have like at least one or two metal bands, or you know, yeah. like two or three rappers, or, or or you know, a funk band. You know, yeah. And so it may not be a scene, but you know, the the band itself doesn't constitute the scene. It's the people that go and watch it, and if there are the people there that want to see it and they're yeah. willing to travel, then there you go. How else do you think location? affects it i think it can be um i don't know many there are many ways um yeah i, I i'm going through back through what i've already said because i can't remember really mm. um the other like is it i think it's almost a like a something cool uh that makes it i mean we're probably one of the few places in ipswich that you have to travel outside of ipswich to see a big band right 
Yeah, because you know? there's not really a big touring no. venue. Yeah. Although it is a Apart shame. From like you get like the Regent, but they'll be like, you know. Yeah. The they're kind a different of... kind of generation of bands that they get there. Mm. So for people sort of our generation, it's a case of Colchester Art Centre or Norwich yeah. UEA mm. or even going down to London to, to the many, many venues that they've yeah, got exactly. there. I think that potentially is the is part of the the the, the excitement of going to a gig, having a day out. Yeah. You know, and, oh, you can go trip. to five guys on the way or yeah, you yeah. know and the other burgers are also available. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Love that burger. Uh, yeah, 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 you're going in there. But yeah, I, I, I think it's a really interesting point. What do you guys think? Please give us a, a, a comment on the YouTube yeah. video. That would really, really help. And I tell you what, I want someone to, who, who's traveled the furthest just to, just for a gig. Oh, yeah. I know a few people who have gone internationally to see bands yeah. and stuff, but I want to know who's gone the furthest. Yeah, let us know. Um, that would be really interesting to know. Um, yeah, so yeah, let us know what you think. Um we're going to be, you know, having a different topic each week. So if you'd like to let us know what you'd like us to discuss, please do. Please think about it. And Harley and Josh Show at gmail.com. Exactly. But until we get to the end of the show, we've got that gig list. Um, time to talk about what's going on this weekend. Have you got any gigs this weekend, Harley? Uh, I've only got a private event, unfortunately. Very nice. Which is great. Very, very, very chirpsy. Uh, so we've got the 28th. Here at the Smokehouse, we've got Girls Do Music. Uh, thanks, guys, for putting back. that on again. That's amazing. Right. Uh, so that's Lakenna, Gabby, Louise Falconer, and Roma. Awesome. Amazing. So that's this Thursday. Uh, come down and support your up-and-coming female artists. And, yeah, show us that we need a, a more a diverse music scene. Uh, March 29th, uh, we've got Eastbox Beatbox Battles. What? That's crazy cool. That sounds cool, Right, man. beatbox battles. That would be amazing. We've got a few sort of local beatboxes around here, which, yeah. which are incredible, so it would be cool to see them Just... put, put up against some other people and see what magic they can make. Yeah, absolute magic. Definitely. That's at Venue 77 in Ipswich. It's Friday, 6 o'clock. Um, March 29th, we've got a big metal night, some like sort of you know thrash-based kind of grind stuff. Uh, I was checking it out earlier. It was really, really cool. Uh, March 29th, Shrapnel. Primital, ABFTF, Mayday Miracle, and Unit 33 at the Premier Pool Club. That's thanks to Dead Cell Promotions and Darren. Uh, that's Friday at 7 o'clock. That's March 29th. Yes. Uh, the most important gig this weekend, though. Go on. The most important gig is uh, JS and the Lockabillies. Oh, yeah, of course we're, it is. <laughs> yeah, we're playing at the Mayor's Ball uh, at the Corn Exchange. So it's all a big uh, charity event. Uh, for the Suffolk Law Centre. The Suffolk Law Centre gives out um, free advice to people that do not have any background in law. If they are going through some problems and they need a solicitor, it's okay, yeah. funded so that people can you know, uh, actually get professional advice. Um, so, you know, if you don't, you know, if you'd like to help donate to that charity, uh, come along on Saturday uh, to the Mayor's Ball at the Corn Exchange where we'll be playing. Or if you need to use that, that yeah. charity I mean that's a great idea get involved with them um, also March 30th we've got Aidan Patterson and Dashwood as well as Honey and the Bear those great. wonderful people Saturday 7.30 John Peel Centre for Creative Arts in Stone Market well, you feel like oh, it looks like you've got a, 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 an event to talk about there Honey um, have you already mentioned 50 round 2 no I have not well as we mm. played some played, uh, played some Impilo earlier we, yes, we've we got did. that coming up which um, should be great that is the 30th yes. I don't know. Saturday that's a Saturday yeah yep yeah, that's the Saturday yes I, I didn't look that far into it um, mm -mm. also on Saturday we've got did you mention Infrasonic uh, no I okay we've got this have. Saturday we've got Infrasonic at the Duke of York amazing um, I, oh, just, I really just, don't just, listen just to what you're saying out. sorry oh, that's alright don't do that why would you want to do that anyway um, uh, just a, sh a little bit more of a shout out that for their 5011 because you got Impilo well you got Bebe doing a part Angel Native James British Count Drancula and LMC that is an amazing lineup. Nice. That is yeah. so good. And then all the, those lyric, you know, lyricists are wonderful. So and, yeah, and it's out. great because if you've been to uh, Three Wise, Three Wise Monkeys before, you'll have seen switch. these guys hanging around. They're big supporters of the music scene yeah. mm -hmm. and the venue itself, uh, and often they end up uh, jumping up on stage because uh, yeah. they seem to know most of the most of the people are playing, and they're really yeah. good. There's a real kind of camaraderie around that 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 whole circuit, which is great. Definitely, man. Um, I've got a thing here on Sunday. What's that? Miss Lisa Jane live show and podcast. Oh. Uh, 
so this is a free entry live show podcast showcasing songwriters from East Anglia, hosted by the amazing Keith Sadler. Amazing. Uh, and they're going to be doing a podcast is as that well. at Arlington's? That's at Arlington's, yes. Oh, that's great. Oh, Sunday, so, yeah. Well, we'll see if we can go along there and learn how it. To, <laughs> le- learn how to do a podcast properly. Commandeer it like pirates. Yes. Speaking of pirates... East Town Pirates are playing this Saturday. Oh, yeah. uh, that is... Oh, crikey, where is it? I haven't actually put down what, what the venue is, though. Um, <laughs> so they, 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 they're going to sort of go on a mini tour, actually. So they're going to be playing with uh, Witch Doctors, Pussy Cat, uh, Pussycat and the Dirty Johnsons. And that is going to be the Steamboat. Sweet. Oh, man. It's a, a East Town Pirates Steamboat gig is yeah. messy and good. Yes. So, yeah, that's this Saturday. I mean, I can't make it because I'm going to be playing at the mayor's ball at the corn exchange of course um and rayna can't play drums so we got rich playing drums for that one nice so that's yeah gonna be quite fun cool. so yeah that's gonna that, uh oh and i haven't actually talked about why we played hot tramp earlier because ghosts of men and hot tramp are playing with violent playground oh yeah at the coda in colchester i still haven't been there no we need to check that place out yeah right yeah. i'm gonna have to get head up there i mean that's again. That's the Saturday where I can't make it because I'm gigging. Are you gigging on the Saturday? I am, unfortunately. That's the Saturday. It was yeah. It. What kind of thing? Wedding. Birthday? Uh, it's a private party. I don't think it's a wedding because we haven't been asked to do a first dance. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's a private party. Of nice, some sort. Yeah, so yeah. But yeah, you guys have got to let us know how it goes. If you uh, listening in, I'm sick. I'm talking. About, um, get along to one of these gigs. If we weren't there, tell us how it was. Yeah. Totally. If you if you went because of us, that means a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you would go because of yourself. I but... want you guys, it's, if you can, if you've been to a gig or if you're at a gig, send us a voice message of you going, a little like 30 second blog of you going, oh, I'm here at the the Steamboat Tavern and uh-huh. it's really good. Rain is taking his top off. I'm in the mosh pit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> send yeah, help. <laughs> yeah, send us a voice clip of you in the mosh pit. That would be great. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, quick shout out to all the guys that helped out with the, uh, the Facebook game this week. Uh, we were talking about um, getting a lyric from a song, getting people to guess the answer. Uh, I think that's loads of fun. So if you want to join in with that, yeah, uh, that's do. on our Facebook page. Um, uh, I'm trying to think about what the sort of best ones was. Um, uh, of course, Rob Lewis put a David Brent one on. Of course he did. Of course he did. Uh, I'm not going to read it out, though. No. In a probes. Uh, Justine Demer, uh, the, Lady J, I've got to give her the biggest props, though, because she put, and it echoed through the canyons like the disappearing dreams of yesterday. That is Sunday Morning Coming Down. Of course. By Johnny song. Cash. Um, so, yeah, and obviously Scott Norman, I got my head choked by a jumbo jet. I don't think that was released, related, though. I think he was just making a statement. Yeah, no, that sounds like a standard weekend for, for, <laughs> for old Scott. Exactly. So, anyway, thanks for listening, guys. Great. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Uh, you, you, what do I do? I panic. <laughs> um, we're going to play you some East Town Pirates because I just love this band so much. Uh, Ship of Fools. Check them out this weekend. We'll see you next Monday. Bye. <laughs> Ship of fools.